you on chapter one, um, introduction to statistics. Um, let's explain some of uh, important terms in um, in statistics. Um, so, if the sample data are not collected in the proper way, meaning you do not pick a simple random sample, um, you collect the data in an inappropriate way, then the data may not be useful at all. So basically, you cannot use the uh, data coming from the sampling method, which is not a proper method. And the method used to collect sample data influences the quality of the statistical analysis. So the, the quality of the sample data actually is, is crucial to have a successful statistical analysis and come up with a, a proper conclusion. And simple random sample, that's the target goal, right? So if you um, conduct a survey, come up with a sample, simple random sample is desired. You, need, you, you know, to have a good result, you need to have a simple random sample. And we get to the uh, definition of simple random sample uh, later on. So statistical method, two major um, statistical methods. First one is observational study. Second one is experiment. Okay. Those two are the most important tools um, researchers um, use to conduct the research study. So let's get to the definition of the experiment and then observational studies. Observational study, basically researchers just observe and measure specific characteristics without attempting to modify. So you do not modify the subjects that are being studied. So this is very important um, concept embedded on under the observational study, no modification needed. Okay, you just simply observe and then measure the uh, specific characteristics of of the participants. Okay, experiment um, for the experiment you. Researcher will apply some treatment and then observe the effects on the subjects. So um, the subjects in the experiments are called experimental unit. Okay. So the Pew Research Center surveyed 2,252 adults and found that 59% of them go online wirelessly. So in this particular research study, um, researcher did not apply any treatment to the subjects. So this is a typical observational study. So they just collect the data, observe and collect the data from the subjects without modifying anything. So observational study. Okay. And another example in the largest public health experiment ever conducted 200,745 children were given the Salk vaccine when that while another 201,229 children were given a placebo. So the vaccine injections consist of a treatment, right? So that modifies the subjects. So when you inject the vaccine into human body, you're actually making the modification to the human body. So here, this is typical experiment. So you can also say that there's a human intervention involved here. Okay, so this is an experiment. Now let's get to the one of the most important concept in statistics is simple random sample. Okay, so this is whenever you conduct a survey, simple random sample is required. So in order to guarantee the good result. Um, you need to have a simple random sample. Um, so the definition of a simple random sample, a sample of n subjects is selected in such a way that every possible sample of the same size, same sample size, have the same chance of being chosen. And if you look at this, this is very rigor, or very strict, and then uh, it's also very extremely difficult to guarantee so that will make sure you know you have a really good sample then the result will be in a in a very random sense okay 
and a random sample so all the members from the population have an equal chance being selected right so every single member in the population has an equal chance being selected okay so again compared to the simple random sample this is less rigor so simple random sample is much better compared to random sample Now let's talk about a sampling method. Since we talk about sampling method, is also an important um, process in, in, in terms of the whole statistical analysis. So uh, the first method is what we call systematic sampling. So you select the starting point. So in the, in the entire population, you pick a starting point and then select every kth element in the population. So in this case, assuming this is the population, Now for our sample, we are picking every third member. Okay, pick a starting point. This is starting point. And from there, we pick in every third member. Every third member after starting point. And this becomes our sample. Okay. And this is what they call a systematic sampling method. Um, you can pick every kth member right in the in the entire population if you have a fairly large population you can pick every 10th 20th maybe every thousandth members in the population depends on the, the population size and the second method sampling method is what we call communion sampling so we use a result that are easy to get for example if you live in building and you conduct a survey and you collect data from your neighbor, right? And you collect data from the neighbor, then this is convenient sampling from the neighbor. Okay, so this is typical convenient sampling. Also, if let's say you are you running a radio radio station and you collect data from your on audience so radio station collecting data from its own audience this is also a convenient sampling uh, method and definitely it's very easy to get the data because you're just getting data from your own audience and, okay. and the third method is called stratified sampling so basically you subdivide the entire population into at least two different subgroups so for example um, if you look at the population of um, US citizens you can divide into male and female or women or men and then you're picking um, you, then you're picking a draw a sample from each subgroup, meaning you're picking a sample from the women group, picking a sample from the men group, and then put them together, and that becomes a, a, the general sample you pick. So um, you can definitely uh, just subdivide the population into at least two different subgroup, subgroups okay, to get a stratified sampling um, result. Also, cluster sampling, so divide the population area into sections um, or clusters, and then randomly select some of the, those clusters, some of those sections, and then choose all members from selected cluster. For example, if let's say um, you look at New York City and you have a look at all the precincts in New York City, and you just randomly pick a Precinct 5, Precinct 16, and Precinct 28. And you select all the residents from each precinct and then come up with your sample. And this is a typical cluster sampling. Another example could be um, if you want to survey the New York City residents, you could divide into five boroughs, right? Five boroughs. And you pick, uh, let's say, you you use Manhattan and Brooklyn 
and then collect data from every resident from Manhattan and Brooklyn and use that to represent in New York City. And that's also what we call a cluster sampling. And sometimes in a complicated you know, research study, you may collect the data um, based on different stage and by combining different you know, kind of sampling methods. So at a certain stage, you probably feel like a certain sampling method is better off. So at a, at a stage one, stage two, you know, you're picking different stage one, stage two. For example, stage one, you could pick um, cross the right, sampling method. And maybe stage two, you're picking systematic sampling method. And depends on the need. But definitely, you could come up with different kind of uh, sampling method. Stage three, maybe you're picking a stratified sampling method. So totally depends on your research, you know, objective. And definitely you can use different sampling method to conduct a research study. So basically this is summary what we talked about so far. So sampling methods, first one random um, sampling method, second one systematic random uh, sampling method, third one is convenient sampling method, fourth one stratified sampling method, fifth one cluster sampling method, sixth one is more like comprehensive ones using multi-stage multi sampling method. Okay. And anytime you conduct a research study using a sample, there's always an error involved here. No matter how well you plan to execute the sampling collection process, there's likely to have some to be to have some error in the results. Uh, first error comes from the sampling error, and this is also the systematic error, meaning you cannot avoid it, right? Non avoidable error. So, no matter how, how good your sample is, you can pick simple random sample, but the difference between the sample result and the true population result um, still exists. So, and this is typically coming from the system. Because no matter how uh, good your sample is, it's, it's never it's never as good as the population itself. So that's why there's a minor sampling error occurring in in the sampling process. And also we have non-sampling error, and this is what we call this is avoidable. You can avoid the non-sampling error error. It's also called human error. That's why you can avoid it. Just be more careful and then follow the procedure more carefully and recall the data properly. Then you can avoid the non sampling error. So, non sampling error occurs when the sample data is incorrectly collected, recorded, or analyzed. So, for example, if you could come up with a non sampling error by selecting a biased sample, meaning you're not picking a simple random sample. You pick a biased sample, maybe it's uh, you just pick a convenient sample uh, using a you could use a defective instrument or copying the data incorrectly. These are all human errors, and you can avoid a human error, avoidable. Okay, so two type of error. And also we have a non-random sampling error, meaning when you pick the sampling method, you didn't pick a proper sampling method, or maybe you just use a convenient sampling method or voluntary response sample, which is not a, a good sample, then non-random um, sampling error occurs, meaning your sample is not simple random sample, then that's bound to have some non-random sampling error. All right.